according to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, those over 50 years as well as persons with chronic health conditions are at more risk of complications or death from COVID-19. Today on Sound Health, we will find out why and how to take care and protect them from contracting the virus. I'm Ola Sumbo Mudupe. Welcome to the show. Let's take a look at updates about COVID-19. The World Health Organization has launched the COVID-19 Law Lab Initiative. According to the Director General, Dr. Tedros Gibrisos, the project gathers and shares legal documents from over 190 countries across the world to help states establish and implement strong legal frameworks to manage the pandemic. The goal is to ensure that laws protect the health and well-being of individuals and communities and that they adhere to international human rights standards. The initiative also aims to support countries to achieve universal health coverage by working with policymakers, civil society groups and other stakeholders to craft laws, ensure that all people and communities have the right to access the promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative and palliative health services they need for sufficient quality to be effective, while also ensuring that the use of these services does not expose the user to financial hardship. The new lab is a joint project of United Nations Development Program, UNDP, the World Health Organization, the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS, and the O'Neill Institute for National and Global Health Law at Georgetown University. Secondary schools in Nigeria will resume on the 4th of August 2020 for transitional classes only. The Federal Ministry of Education says the resumption will enable students to prepare for the West African Examination Council examinations scheduled to commence from 17th of August. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced the inclusion of six new molecular laboratory networks in Benin, Bauchi, Rivas, Enugu, Abia and the FCT. There are currently 59 labs in 30 states with the capacity to test for COVID-19 in Nigeria. The use of rapid diagnostic test kits for COVID-19 testing in Lagos remains illegal until the state can validate that the kits actually work. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, who reaffirmed this, added that the state will soon formally activate the home-based care program for asymptomatic COVID-19 cases. The cases will be managed through a co-telemed. To date, more than 40,000 cases have been confirmed in Nigeria, with over 17,000 discharges and above 800 deaths recorded in 36 states, including the Federal Capital Territory. Globally, there have been over 15 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including more than 600,000 deaths. Sound Health on Lagos Television. The COVID-19 pandemic is impacting the global population in drastic ways. In many countries, older people are facing the most threats and challenges at this time. Nigeria is not left out. Today, Dr. Ogunyemi, a public health physician and senior lecturer at Department of Community Health and Primary Care, College of Medicine, University of Lagos, will let us know why the elderly are mostly affected. Dr. Ogunyemi is joining us via Skype. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ogunyemi. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. 
Hey, Dr. Ogunyemi, why do persons aged 50 years above are cautioned to take extra measures against contracting COVID-19? The main reason from our study of the coronavirus um, over the last few months has been that it's the people who have other underlying conditions are more likely to be affected by the disease than others who do not. And ordinarily, with age, people develop chronic conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, lung diseases, and so on and so forth. Therefore, this puts them at risk. But it's not just the fact that they have underlying conditions, but other socioeconomic conditions as well. Remember that for some people at this age, they are getting closer to retirement, depending on the country you are. So in Nigeria, for instance, the formal sector, age 60 is when people retire. That also means that they have um, less income coming in and um, the pensions are not also that readily available. All of this already affects their access to health care. We do not have specialized services in large numbers. We have very few geriatricians and geriatric services. So we do not have dedicated services for this age group. And they cannot have that access, especially now for financial reasons and for the fact that they are also at risk going to the hospitals. So they will find themselves staying back more at home and other conditions that they had before would then cause them to be more ill compared to younger people. Remember, they are also on medications, maybe for one thing or the other, and this also puts them at risk. And then there are mental health challenges as well. As older people get older, they have that the younger ones around them move away to more urban areas. So they are left alone, sometimes by themselves. And the fact that we have lockdown and we have telling people, please do not visit the older people at this time, also makes them affected by their mental health status, by right? loneliness, depression, and some of these other factors. Some of them are also caregivers to grandchildren. Mm. And so it's, they're really affected during this period much more than younger people, and we are not paying enough attention to that. Okay, if we are to look at the immune systems now, how is the COVID-19 pandemic affecting older people differently than younger generations? So the immune system generally helps us to fight uh, infections, especially viral infections. Okay, so as people get older, uh, their immune system is reduced mostly because the cells in the body also age okay. and therefore they are more likely to need um, immune boosters to so that they can meet up with the challenges of everyday life much unlike younger people for women by the time they go older and approach um, the, the age of menopause they also have hormones produced in lower amounts and all of those things affect the immune system in general, coupled with chronic diseases that they develop along the line. However, most of this can be boosted by taking very vegetables very rich in vitamin C and also taking a lot of um, supplements. Also, the, the, the body of somebody who is much older is far less as active as a younger person, and this in itself is a risk factor, especially in COVID. Okay, earlier you made mention about mental health. What is the impact on older adults' mental health now, and how can they cope? So I mentioned mental health mostly because of the fact that uh, they may experience loneliness, they may experience isolation. Um, by that, I mean that um, the, the younger people who, like children, who would come around more often, may not be able to visit as often as possible. And let's also remember that the older people are not very technologically um, savvy, like younger people. And some of them may not have the um, gadgets or wherewithal to stay with information or to remain very active. And so this is the time they suffer the most in terms of their mental health. So how can we 
help them. Let's also remember that dementia can occur in some older people at this age. Mm. So this is the time we are supposed to help them. And we can help them by getting them some of these gadgets that can help them reach to younger people, like make video calls rather than just um, the phones that cannot help this. When they when they are able to, um, so when they are able to interact more, then they feel better. Those with dementia is really going to be tough for them at this time because they need people around them to really support them and keep them active. But that may also not be present for them at this time. So these are some of the reasons why the mental health issue is big among the elderly people. Okay, is there a treatment plan for persons with underlying medical conditions at this time? Because we know some are based on um, routine drugs. Is there any treatment plan if anybody contracts um, COVID-19 at this time? So at this time, what we have are more of supportive treatments um, rather than um, a, a treatment that will say it cures. However, there are lots of antiviral drugs that are also being used with, with a lot of um, good results. So but what the normal treatment plan is to look at the symptoms each person comes with. For many people, they have symptoms that would ordinarily go without any medication. Mm -hmm. But for some others, they would need some kinds of treatment. So these days, it depends on what you present with. If you present with lung diseases, we know the drug to give. If you present with um, difficulty with um, smelling or tasting, or if you present with um, pain to the respiratory tract infection, whatever it is, those kinds of symptoms will be treated. Okay. But a, a lot of younger people will get well even without any particular medication. But then those who are older will need medication. And the more technology is advancing, we are also able to know, the more there's research, we are also able to know the drugs to do. And now there is a better cure or better treatment than um, when we first had the COVID situation. Okay, let's look at caregivers now. What has COVID-19 raised for families of caregivers of the elderly and how can this, um, how can they pull through? Uh, so, so important, so important because um, caregivers by themselves are the people who are able to care for older people. Um, in this crime, we do not have a lot of um, institutional care, unlike um, more developed countries where it's a lot of institutional care. So in, we have people going to homes to give care to people, either by living with them or going and coming. But we should also know that caregivers themselves can be a risk to older persons if they do not uh, mind their own activities. So caregivers have to be careful, knowing that every day, every day they are going to older people to render care. That means that they must also ensure that they stay safe themselves. They do not go to crowded places. They do not. They are not in close contact with other people. That they always wear a face mask, wash their hands before coming into the home of the elderly person. And when they get into the home. They must also ensure that they also wash their hands before even touching the elderly person. They must wear a mask throughout when they're in the home of the elderly person. They must prepare very nutritious meals for them. They must clean all surfaces and wipe them with um, disinfectants to ensure that um, everywhere is totally decontaminated. If they're able to do this and keep the elderly person lively, then to a large extent they're keeping the elderly person safe. So caregiving is a huge thing and then there's a lot of caregivers can do at this time to keep them safe. If they're ill during this time, they should report to wherever the primary caregiver for the elderly person is. It's either getting a phone consultation first initially so that they do not have to visit the hospital. But if they have to visit the hospital, there should be no hesitation to visit the hospital to ensure that they get well. Do not want people dying from other causes apart from, you know, COVID just because of the fear of COVID. Okay, although all age groups are 
risk of contracting COVID-19. Older people face significant risk of developing severe illnesses if they contract the disease due to psychological changes that come with aging and potential underlying health conditions. Can you please tell us how to minimize the risk of COVID-19 infection? In general? Yes. So again, we cannot um, overemphasize the fact that the virus moves with people. So when people move around, the virus moves with them. The virus stays alive, well, and thrives, multiplies in the body compared to outside the body. So um, the virus is always looking for another host to get into and multiply. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to encourage as much as possible. If you do not limit going outdoors, if you can, if you must go outdoors, please rather stay in. Um, stay ensure that you have physical distancing between you and whoever you are dealing with and in, on the average we say that if two people can stretch their hands you know wide and the other person stretches it also out and you can't touch each other then that's safe enough why because you want to ensure that um, droplets from that person doesn't get to whoever they're speaking with also we have talked about universal masking so please mask up. What that means is wear a mask to cover your nose and your mouth. When you do that, that reduces the droplets that come out of your nose or mouth when sneezing, singing, talking loudly, and all of those activities we normally will do. It is not enough for one person to wear a mask. If I wear a mask and you wear a mask, then we reduce each other's, um, um, uh, um, each other's risk of catching um, the virus. The reason we are saying so is that we know that a lot of people, more than half of people, will be asymptomatic. They will not show symptoms. And therefore, it is not enough to say this person looks well. If we are going to have any activity, it is better we do this activity outdoors. And if we stay indoors, let us ensure that the place is well ventilated, windows open. And also to ensure that we wash our hands very frequently. Mm -hmm. The reason is because we tend to put our hands on our face quite a number of times during the day. So if we have clean hands or disinfected hands, then we are also ensuring that even if we touch our face, which we must limit, that we are re reducing infection to our face. Let us wear masks properly, covering our nose and our mouth. And let us also know that if there is no water around us, we can use hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers should contain more than 60% alcohol in it and should be used uh, generously. If we can adhere to this very simple preventive uh, method, then we are going to a large extent protect ourselves, protect others around us from getting the virus. Okay, Dr. Oguyemi, what advice do you have for the elderly now in case of symptoms, when they suspect symptoms of COVID-19? What is the first thing they are supposed to do in terms of seeking medical help? Okay. So first and foremost, the elderly, as much as possible, let prevention be key. Do not leave your house if you do not have to. When you leave your house, ensure that wherever you go is not a crowded place. If you have to go to the market, make sure it's a supermarket or a market that is big enough and you don't have to rub yourself around people. And you can do what you have to do and come back home. Ensure that you wash your hands and all the other safety measures I talked about. However, if you have symptoms, you know, maybe such that you're coughing, a dry cough, or you press, you find out you cannot smell or taste something, taste food, or you can't smell yourself or, or something around you, please um, report. The legal state has phone numbers or, you know, all over the place that you can make a call to and complain about um, the symptoms you're feeling. You can also go to the website of NCDC or even um, NIMA website where you can um, fill a form to say these are the complaints I'm having. They will require that you have a test done. And now, apart from the laboratories, public laboratories we have, we also have um, private laboratories 
um, that can ensure that people get faster test um, results. So for an older person, you really cannot wait any longer. If you have stuff, please complain and let them get you tested so that treatment can start on time. What um, studies have found is that those who report late are the ones who have higher mortality, that is higher death rates from coronavirus as compared to those who report um, earlier. Okay, before so that I... is what I would Okay, before I let you go, Dr. Oguyemi, recently the Director General of NCDC says the st recent statistics centers around youth. What could be responsible for this? Okay, I mean, young people are the most mobile um, set of people, and that is that statistics is not peculiar to Nigeria, it's all over the world. So, a lot of young people are remaining at work are having to go and come and therefore they are they, they are more at risk than others in they are more at risk than others in getting the COVID nineteen. The only beauty of this is that they are they are also mostly asymptomatic and they get better from it, unlike the older counterpart. So yes, mm. we still see more young people just because of their mobile nature. For some people, it is just a bit of um, excessive wanting to experiment mm -hmm. with uh, um, COVID as we have seen in some other countries. And we just have to be careful. Even as a young person, it is not to any advantage that you get the COVID where you can avoid it. Because now studies are beginning to say that there are long-term effects of COVID on people. And so it's better to avoid this long-term effect. Okay, Dr. Ogunyemi, we sincerely appreciate your time and resources on Sound Health. Thank you very much for having me. We have been talking to Dr. Doi Ogunyemi, a public health physician on the impact of COVID-19 on the elderly via Skype. Dr. Ogunyemi is also a senior lecturer at Departments of Community Health and Primary Care, College of Medicine, University of Lagos. Sound Health continues in a moment with Trending Health News. Worldwide, 290 million people are living with viral hepatitis unaware. World Hepatitis Day takes place every year on 28th July, bringing the world together under a single theme to raise awareness about the global burden of viral hepatitis and to influence real change. The theme for this year is Find the Missing Millions. Details in this package.
we say thank you on today's episode of Sound Health. Remember the importance of staying physically active and practicing healthy habits to cope with stress alongside regular hand washing and other precautionary measures. For comments and inquiries, please send SMS to 0035826603 or follow us on social media at LTV Social, hashtag Sound Health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice.